Hi, Stephanie Kwame from the CAT Academy, and we are continuing on with our cabin project. And today we're going to learn about tricks and tips for walkthroughs and renderings. And the first thing that uh, you probably think is why do people, or why do we need to do a rendering? And the basic thing is so people, your customer, can see what the project's going to look like. I've noticed also that the cities require a rendering along with the construction documents before you can get a building permit. That happened to me in a residential and a commercial building. So there's a lot of reasons to do rendering. In the past, the people that did rendering had to take a 2D, some 2D geometry from CAD, extrude it, they used two or three programs. They had to be an expert in graphics in order to make something come out nice. But the advantage of Graphisoft's building information or model-based design is as you are drawing this, you've got your you've got a 3D object already. So it makes it really easy. Let's go to document and I'm going to go creative imaging and photo render projection and without doing anything but building your um, project you can render it and it looks amazing I think that is just amazing but in order to sell the project we need to make it look a little bit more friendly to customers and it doesn't even have a, a horizon I noticed that the people that did well in rendering in the past happened to be uh, people again that were good with graphics and they were also creative or artistic one went back to school and took fine arts so he could learn about uh, shadows and um, how the and uh, basically the part of painting where you don't actually uh, paint something as it actually appears but you give an illusion of what it would be like you might put in a few tiles on a roof and in our mind we put all the tiles there and that's the key to doing computer uh, renderings as well and so here is our um, we're gonna get started by doing a mesh now mesh will cover a big uh, area and it has right now some ground on it and it has grass. If I were doing a green and sustainable project I might put gravel on the top or something but we're going to keep it with the grass. One thing is it starts with single lines but we want to do the biggest rectangle we can and the reason for that is we want to have it seem like it goes on forever. So in other words, we put in this grass and we want it to be like infinite. And now we have a horizon, which is really important, but there is bleeding through the grass into the house. So we need to lower it. It's at the wrong height. So I'm going to go to an elevation, use the arrow so I can get into an edit mode, select the ground, select a grip and I can see if I go down that way and say I want to go down that way six inches and then enter then that puts me about exactly where I want to be so that's much better okay so now we have some grass in the background and we have a horizon which makes it look a little bit homier another thing is slab is a great tool for dressing up things if I want this to have let's say like a front porch I can use the slab tool the slab tool has materials of course and I'm just using the default uh, materials to create a patio on the back and a front porch and that makes it look a little more homey another thing is objects we need some tree objects <clears throat> now I have selected obviously tree before so I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time tree and what this does too if you're connected to the internet this will go out and find things this is from the internal library and then if I go down here you can see it's finding things on the internet and these are parametric objects which means I can change their width their height really anything about them and I'm going to choose 
uh, let's say a couple of trees and you don't want to put in a lot of trees you want to give the illusion of, uh, of it being in a treed area or in a forest the tree I just selected is 26 feet tall but I could change that and it has a crown of 13 feet or the width of 13 feet so placement of them you'll find is a crucial for making things look like there's more than what you actually have. So we have placed just three trees and a little bit more and already it looks a little bit better than it did. <clears throat> what I can do also is let's go ahead and select this tree here and let's go in for the details and why not change this height to be like 36 so make that a larger tree so it shows up in the background but I don't have a lot of trees here but if I render this it looks a little bit better than it did before so I go to documentation creative imaging and I'll do a photo render projection but again the more things you put in the longer the render time and you don't want to have it look uh, exactly you want to again create something in the mind of the customer an image in the mind of the customer that this is where it's at I do have lights on on my interior and I put them in with the lamp command so that I could have some interior lights as well so let's go back to the first floor and when that renders it's basically taking a time zone a default time zone and uh, default information to render but as soon as you come down and you go and select a camera and put in some cameras then it will take that information this camera is set up for someone that's holding it about five feet tall so if I was five feet and walking around and had this right by my eyes that's what it would seem like and the target Z looks like it says it's looking up but it's not it's looking down four feet six inches and so we're gonna go with the defaults because that um, lets you know what you've got to begin with and then you can change it from there let's click on Sun and notice how you can change the project location so I could say that I'm in a certain area and let's see if I can find um, if you know the latitude and longitude of where you are then you can actually put in an area as well but I want to be someplace where it's a little lighter it's actually let's do it really doesn't matter but I'm my cabin is going to be in Guadalajara so we're gonna say okay <clears throat> so now uh, the Sun if I were to do Sun studies at a certain time of day you would see actually how the shading will fall and uh, where I live we have some early pioneer homes that were put into a, a block that you can walk along and look at them and they're restored they're absolutely fabulous but we have people that are putting in uh, skyscrapers so when they put in a skyscraper we do a sun study to make sure it won't affect their gardens and the lawn of our uh, preserved homes okay so now I'm going to say that I am standing here and I'm looking this direction and now I'm going to say I'm standing here and I'm heading into the house and I'm looking over here now because I've got lights I will uh, my inside will look good don't put in too many cameras or you're going to be sorry because it actually does a camera path for you and as I continue around you want to always be looking back at the house because other than that you won't see anything I'll do one more that's more than I would normally do <clears throat> so basically I've got all these cameras that I just made and they show up over here in the navigator so camera no number one sees that 
I might want to raise the height because it kind of clips it off. Camera two, three, and so you can kind of see what it's going to see before you actually start your render or walkthrough. Whoops, I hit something. I'm using a touchpad, so sometimes I misapply. Okay, so now let's say that for camera number one, I want to lower that just a little bit, or raise that up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the first floor, and camera number one I think is highlighted right now, which makes it handy. And I'm going to say that I want it to go to, let's say, five feet. We'll just say five feet, which is raises it up just a little bit, and now we'll look. And so you can see that you can bring it down. So you, by adjusting the height or level of the camera, you could be like two feet off the ground and be like a little two-year-old that's seeing their house for the first time. That would be very interesting. <clears throat> but anyway, there we go. We've got the beginnings of a walkthrough, and that wasn't hard either. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Document and Creative Imaging and look at Photo Render Settings. When this ships, it generally ships in the sketch mode so that when you render it, you will just have a, um, it will look like you sketched it out or hand sketched it. But the wonderful render in here is Lightworks. Lightworks does radiosity. That means that it no it takes into account the material you chose and the reflective power of that material, and it does uh, um, reflections off of that as well as taking into account the sun. I mean, it does a lot of mathematical things as it's rendering out. And to begin with, keep it in lower resolution. Just take the defaults in resolution. One thing uh, I had to do. Uh, shadow casting and change that to be by lamp sending it's because I added my lamps. Another thing is your background. The background uh, you can use a picture and that picture is a JPEG. So that means that you could take a picture of the site that this is going on and have that render in with it as well. Uh, sometimes too after I see how it's rendering out I may brighten it just a little bit and normally it comes in this area so it's already uh, uh, brightened a little bit. So I'm going to say apply and say OK. Now <clears throat> in the past if people were rendering out they wouldn't be able to do a low resolution uh, look at what they were doing and this is called a flyby when we do a walkthrough with uh, ARCHICAD. So I'm going to say create a flyby or look at a flyby but the first thing I want to do is I want it to show it and what it's going to do is it's going to add in frames as it goes from place to place and so we're going to go ahead and say show and you can see it does um, does it frame by frame so it renders out frame by frame. So basically what you want to do is you want to be rendering when you know like during the night look at those shadows isn't that awesome you can see the uh, light from inside of the cabin um, when you see the finished product it's so amazing so you probably uh, want to, and, and this cabin would probably take the lunch hour at least uh, to render out and so if you uh, uh, if you decide that uh, you want to render it that's something that you have to do I'm gonna say stop now that started into the rendering first and the reason it did is I had it on a photo render window because I rendered last so I'm gonna change it to the 3D window and I had it on save and I gave it a file name so it was rendering out I would like to also make this into a QuickTime movie is what we want to do and you can do a single JPEG and print it on photo glossy paper from and uh, in general 
our customers have been doing like D size 24 by 36 and put it on backboard and it looks absolutely fabulous but you've got some awesome 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 uh, things that you can do or changes you can make now I'm going to show this is what it should have done it should do a low resolution show first and the reason you might want to do that is there might be changes that you want to make to it before you uh, start into a final render we used to have customers come because we had a very fast network and we would render out their stuff using all of our network power called the render farm at night uh, just to get their uh, projects done and then there's always going to be a little mistake and um, that just drives people crazy and uh, people that do this for a living would say oh yeah that was really great but here's my problem but it is amazing this package is amazing it does so much for you and it's really easy to create professional looking renderings and walkthroughs with it and by using even just the default materials you can uh, by selecting that door and going through uh, the details of the door you could actually open it if you wanted to as well instead of walking through the door which I'm going to keep it on until we walk through the door I think that's really interesting so again this is all low resin resolution and uh, we're almost through there we go now we're in the house okay so I hope that you'll play with this and uh, see what amazing things that you can do I have a rendering up here that I did so it's again it made a quick time movie file and when you uh, save you tell it where you want the movie file to go and um, and you want to put it someplace you can remember to see it and this is one that I made at a different time but you can see the reflective power you can actually slow this down as well but here we go it's that's enough to make you uh, dizzy but that's amazing that is just amazing how easy it is now we can build on from here but what uh, the tutorial is going to go through is getting you through these first initial steps so there's a tutorial that goes along with this on the instructor portal and I hope that you have the talent and the skill uh, and like rendering because again it does take it really does take um, a special person to be really good at rendering you can see my lights I hung them from the ceiling with wire I did the same thing in the bathroom in there but uh, I had a good time with this I really did I thought this was a great project so until next time thank you for listening